wiggle your left big toe a little bit. Wiggle it? Yep. The art of distraction. Oh my goodness. What's going on out there in YouTube land? We are here today in La Jolla with Dr. Jess MD. Um, she's an expert in all kinds of health issues, particularly holistic. She is a medical doctor, but she sort of looks at things through multiple lenses. So she's somebody you want to go check out on her website www.drjess.com. There's tons of products there. Make sure to buy them with your money. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about you're dealing with some tension headaches today. Yeah, yeah. you know, I, it's weird. I have this frontal headache right on my eyebrows here. Um, and also always my neck and shoulders was kind of where I carry a lot of my tension. So okay. that's just kind of par for the course for me. And so. you've been getting some myofascial work done, right? Yeah, and it's been great. That's so awesome. yeah, absolutely. I think that's kind of my recipe. So if you can kind of elaborate on that and tell me what's going on in my body with all that stuff. I can try. Yeah, I'd love it. I'll try to explain what's going on too. First, first time's a charm, right? Good luck to both of us. <laughs> all right, let's go ahead and sit right here. Again, yes. <laughs> Essentially what happens is the trigeminal nucleus basically hijacks C1, 2, and 3 awesome. and the trigeminal nerve. So when you have a problem up top, particularly from the C1, 2, and 3 nerve roots, your brain doesn't necessarily know how to interpret that data. So it'll hijack the ophthalmic branch, the trigeminal nerve, and you'll feel pain across your brow, your upper part of your head. Um, and typically that comes with neck tension and, and problems like that. And one of the theories behind it, which is interesting, is that evolutionarily speaking, some of the parts of our body don't really have a lot of innervation because if something was harming it, you'd probably be dead. The upper cervical spine being one of those, uh, referral from bristle organs as well, they typically grab onto other pathways and you don't really feel it exactly where there's pain. Um, and this is just one of those tricky spots. And since we're always on laptops and computers, or if you're leaning over patients, if you're doing injections, IV stuff, there's a good chance you're putting a lot of pressure up in here. So we're here to help you out with that. So talk about it a little bit. Um, a lot of my people have been asking about stem cells. Can you elaborate yes. on that a little bit for us? So actually stem cells are a fascinating topic, um, but I would tell all of your audience to really get a good assessment by someone that's unbiased and fair first, because the problem with stem cells or biologics, as they should be called, is that they are not a first line treatment. They should be a probably a third line treatment actually. And so things like um, you know manipulation, manual manipulation, as well as um, prolotherapy if you have someone with a really skilled hand, or um, platelet um, uh, PRP, or platelet rich plasma, also is something that should be looked at before stem cells or biologics are jumped to because of the cost. And you know, they're not really active once you inject them in the body. They really um, work by signaling our growth factors to come on board and be active. And that's really using your own body to, um, or using, kind of re recruiting your own body to work for itself rather than against it. So you really have to kind of make sure the patient's in a place where they're not in an inflammatory state, they're not eating inflammatory food. And until all that's been looked at, you're really not doing the patient a service by jumping right to biologics or stem cells. But if all that's been done and the patient has been looked at otherwise that way, man, that's a great way to help people heal and to recruit um, acute inflammation in the body that works for you rather than against you. Okay, so. interesting. And what I've seen anecdotally speaking is, um, you know, maybe 60, 40 response rates from some of my patients, but mm -hmm. I haven't really had any negative effects. Is that something you sort of noticed too, other than pocketbook being a little bit lighter? <laughs> You're aiming to that one. Yep. So, you know, yeah, absolutely. But you know, some of the studies we're just not sure about, this is a really new field. It's cutting, tre it's trendy, it's cutting edge. It does work, like you said, about 60 to 40, especially if you have a skilled person that's good with injections. Um, so there's a lot of um, confounding factors here. However, um, you know, the problem with uh, stem cells is that they're grown in bovine serum so that they won't reproduce in human serum. They won't expand that way. So people are taking them, growing their own mediums, patenting their own mediums, and then trying to reproduce these stem cells in, um, in their own bovine growth factor. And so you can imagine that some of the immune responses that might elicit in humans aren't as favorable as it would if we were growing it in our own human serum, right? right. So there's these, there's these um, things that are kind of left out in the air that we haven't really answered properly yet for a lot of people. So it's kind of like the holy cow of medicine. Yeah, yeah, you know, totally. <laughs> oh, that's a bad joke. Yeah, so uh, a great joke. And the reason why it's so expensive is because it's not FDA approved yet. Is that correct? Because there it hasn't been not. enough uh, trials done on it. It is not. Absolutely, guys. And you know, the, the thing is, you, let's the studies that have been done on stem cells. They took three um, commercially available biologic or stem cell products, and there were no live mesenchymal stem cells in mm. any of them. None of them. So, but see, people still got benefit from them. So, what is it doing when you inject these stem cells? There, they're recruiting your own stem cells through. 
American effects. They're recruiting your own growth factors, which then recruit your stem cells. And that's how they're working, right? But if you've got them in a little bit of fluid, you're storing them for so many days in a, in a cold nitrogen, liquid nitrogen tank, you know, there needs to be, what studies show how and when those stem cells degrade? When do they quit working? How long can you store them? So immediately when you inject them, the inflammatory response ensues. So they sur do they survive that? There's a lot of questions left unanswered for a lot of money. Right, makes a lot of sense. Ooh, yeah, that's all moving. Yeah, you're hearing a lot of people that are like going to Colombia or Panama and paying $25,000 or something like that. Yeah. Uh, no guarantees, you know, really not a lot of research and they're willing to fork out that money. Yeah. Um, and it's kind of like, well, I guess with, depending on your financial situation, if you've got it like that, you know, it, it's something else. But there's a lot of people that are sort of working class heroes that they'll hear a podcast or something and they'll dump their entire family savings or their college tuition on something that they just don't know will or won't work yet. And sort of what I talk about is like the conservative interventions that you start with, they help to rule in or out a diagnosis, right? So like Completely. if something works for you, that sort of validates the diagnosis that you were expecting to begin with. Right. So if I gave you an um, antibiotic and you had a chest infection and it worked, then we know that we're on the right path. If it didn't, maybe we need a different antibiotic or who knows, maybe you have a viral infection exactly. or a fungal infection or something else. Exactly. So, um, the yeah. response is what matters, and that's where we always talk about results-oriented care, um, acknowledging the literature but not being wholly dependent on it. Right, and you know, I will say, I don't mean to completely, you know, harp on stem cells and, and give them a whole, totally bad rap. They are great for a lot of people and they do wonderful things when the, pa the patients are completely vetted in the proper way and they're prepared and expectations are, are, are light in the right way and people do their research. And that's sort of the key for everything in medicine, right? Is doing your research. Do your research. You know, having, knowing you have a physician or another healthcare provider that has done their due diligence, that has spent the time to look at you as an individual um, and is sort of vested in the process because I think a lot of times you end up at sort of like a, a McDonald's of, of medicine, whether it's yes. a doc in the box or even some of the chiropractors out there. Um, and if everybody's getting the same care, well, when you look at your Gaussian distributions, we know that's really not gonna be all that effective. Maybe we're getting 30% that are doing well, the center of your, you know, your normal curve. But what about the periphery? You know, if you see 100 people a day, you know, there's four right there that are gonna be the extreme extreme right. derivative. So if something only works for 4%, do we ignore those people or do we get them the care they need? Exactly, exactly. And so that's why tailored medicine is so very important. I always stress to my audience too, you know, one size fits all medicine is bad medicine. Yep. I'm sorry, every time. And that, that applies for alternative care and everything else too. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, I sell supplements and I tell people supplements aren't enough. You got to change your life. You got to right. eat eating the right food. You know, yeah, I'm not, I'm, I'm in it to, you know, help others while helping myself. So I have to be honest with people. It's not, there's no magic bullet. There's a way. lifestyle. Yes. Well, they were talking about that, the democratic debate the other night. They were like, you know, we have a sick care system. So what are we doing about X, Y, Z? And it's like, well, this is a little more complex than that. What are you going to treat people that don't have problems yet? Because <laughs> sort of the issue we have here is we're abundant we have a really wealthy society and people have a hard time with self-control and now when yes. once I mean we're wired to conserve energy and we're wired to consume calories and when they're so accessible as we're seeing in China and all these other places around the world obesity skyrockets diabetes skyrockets so there has to be a cultural change it's not something that politicians can just put into place and think that it's gonna change anything totally like we have to have a cultural shift and I think that people like you are sort of at the forefront of changing that lifestyle medicine and that's a really cool thing but I appreciate that thank you so much I just feel like they've been medicine has been misrepresented and people think that you can just take a magic pill and you should feel better and that's what health is and I'm here to tell people I wish health felt that great <laughs> right. it, the healing feels terrible right. and you get worse before you get better because if there's something hiding in the body that it needs to recognize the body has to feel that right. and see that before it can change that and that doesn't feel good right. that's your body that gives you that fever that's your body that gives you that swelling and that pain right. to push things out right it's screaming or, or they at you vomit or, or have diarrhea or something like that it's like let me just take a bunch of Imodium, well, maybe your body needs to get rid of something. <laughs> it's smarter right? than you most right. of the time. Most of the time. Most of the time, Absolutely. yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Let's do this. I'm going to have you long sit. So you're going to sit right here with your feet on the okay. table facing that sure. way. Sure. We're going to do a thoracic mobilization. Oh, wow. That sounds important. Okay. <laughs> well, it connects your neck to your lower back, so it's pretty important. Pretty important. All right. So give yourself a big hug. Okay. So self-love is also important. <laughs> I'm going to go right back over like that. Deep breath in and blow it out. Ah. Very nice. Oh, I hope you guys heard that. <laughs> that was I great. Yeah. Okay, let's go so, ahead and lay face up. Face up, okay. 
And so what that does is, you know, one of the biggest problems with the cervical spine is actually stiffness in the thoracic spine. Um, so you'll create extra motion in your cervical spine if your T-spine doesn't move that well. Okay. Um, oh, wow. And when we talk about the T-spine, a lot of times we're talking about the relative position of the scapulas. Most of the muscles that tie in your neck attach to your scapula. So if your shoulder blades roll forward, all of a sudden you can't get your T-spine back. And now we have a biomechanical oh, issue. Oh, man. So my shoulders are rolling forward is the problem. Relatively. It depends on your reference point. Okay. Or your T-spine's too far back. What we yeah. just did there was we, we blocked the T-spine to move the shoulder blades back relative to that position. Okay. Now there's a shorter distance from the top of the scapula to your neck, so those muscles aren't overstretched now. Okay. But it's that's temporary because now you got to stretch and strengthen. Okay. So we have to get you in the right position, but then you have to do the work just like in everything else, right? It's always that way, isn't it, though? Yeah. And you feel a little stuck there? Yeah, it hurts there. Actually, it's tender yeah. for sure. All right. So we're going to do a little move here, too. So bring her around the corner. Will your left big toe a little bit? Wiggle it? Yep. Ooh, I like that. I mean, I like that a lot. Okay. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Okay, and this time I just want you to drop your left shoulder down a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> the art of distraction. Ah, yeah. oh, it feels so much better already. All right, we'll go ahead and sit back up. Yeah, I'm going to face that direction. Okay. So give me a big sassy hip like this. Sassy hip. Yep. All right, pull this elbow straight back. It's good. Back, yes. Okay. Same thing here. Okay. And goes there and pull back. Pull, pull, pull. And that one's solid. The right handed. Nice. Yeah. 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 It's yeah, just a thumb. Oh my goodness. Can you check my elbows too? Mm -hmm. I feel like my elbows are out. They bother me a lot. Like here? Like a bursitis type of picture, like right there. Like right in there. Ah. Mm hmm. That's probably your lateral head of your tricep. Yes, it is. That's that, sore? Yes, that's sore. Oh. <laughs> so you can foam roll this pretty easily or use like a dip handle. Is it from handstands? Probably. That's handstands and yoga. Yeah. Okay. But you can feel the difference in tone here. So the long head, lateral head. That it lateral head is terrible. Tore. Yeah. And that ties right in that area. And your elbow joint is sort of complicated, right? It does this motion and it does this motion. So it hinges and it pronates and supinates. So if any of the muscles that tie in go off, then you'll lose one of those ranges of motion. Oh. The other one's going to struggle a little bit too. And eventually it turns into bone spurs and... Uh, stuff I don't want. Yeah, pointy elbows. Nah. <laughs> Not babe. Pointy elbows. We still never explained that joke to Noah. That one's good there, actually. That one's good, okay. It's just, you got to work on the tricep. Maybe a little pronator terries too. Mm, mm -hmm. That's so sore right there. Wow, wow, yeah. wow. It's amazing. So what I'm doing is, is blocking off the pronator, but then forcing into supination, so he elongates the muscle. Oh my goodness. Attached from here to here. So just rotating will help that. Yeah. Okay. But it helps also if you both pin and stretch it like I'm doing here. Mm -hmm. So either with your other knuckle or... Wow. Yeah, there we go. That's, yeah, it's starting to, it just gave loose. Feel yeah. it actually when yeah. it gave way. Totally. I wanted to tell you too, um, while you're working on this side, when I was born, mm -hmm. I was born face up rather than face down. Okay. And they took forceps and flipped me, and I flipped back over again. So they took forceps and reflipped me. So part of my neck issues and cervical issues that you're seeing, uh -huh. is that something you see a lot where, where babies had maybe traumatic births? I don't know, honestly. Yeah, they that's don't not, know. That's not really a. I know too much history. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, um, I generally don't deal with kids very often. So I kind of treat between like, you know, 15 and up. Um, but I definitely do know there are some chiropractors that kind of, and osteopaths too, that focus on that kind of stuff. Yeah. So, I just wonder how it could affect adults. I mean, I could certainly see the biological plausibility for sure. I just don't know. Interesting. Also, I don't remember Pythagorean theorem either, so. Yeah, I don't even know why you needed to learn that. Right. Honestly. I could probably pull it out, actually. But we were getting, <laughs> we were having a debate the other day on, uh, because we use the term power um, and force so so just flippantly in our society, I'm like, no, that's there's a physics property for it. And I think what, what's what's power again? It's uh, I think it's work times um, distance traveled so over time in seconds. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think you're right. So when somebody's actually. talking about power, like there's actually literally power. No. <laughs> right. That guy's got a lot of power right there, and I'm talking about physically, not like, you know, yeah. societally, but I'm like, mm. Not so much. Uh, I don't know. It's not I don't think it's what you, it means what you think it means. 
So this is literally just tight musculature yeah. that's causing all of that. Just overuse. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So does that feel lighter than all those? Yeah, now? it feels much better than it did. Absolutely. Everything felt stuck there. And then see how the neck goes up. And then the headache's gone. Perfect. Yeah, the headache's Sweet. absolutely gone. So. You survived. Yeah, thank you so right, much for my treatment. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate it, bro. Thank you so much. Peace out. Make sure to sub, uh, drop some comments. If you hate chiropractors, make sure to comment that. If you hate doctors, make sure to comment that. Go ahead and start a fight in the comments. That'll make us generate some more revenue. Yeah, we love debates. Go right ahead. <laughs>